People sometimes ask me why I became a printmaker, and for many years I myself wasn't able to answer that question properly. In earlier years I was very interested intellectually in music and tried to make a living in that field, in a classical performance, a composition, uh, even pop music and jazz. But none of those attempts led to a clear career. It just wasn't right for me. I, don't know, I also dabbled in such things as building guitars, making furniture, even some toy making. And these things seemed more suited to my abilities, but again, none of them took hold very strongly. But when I tried printmaking, just for a lark one day really, something clicked, although I didn't understand that until some years had passed. I was working on a print one day and suddenly had a kind of a flashback memory to a time way back in elementary school. I might have been 10 years old or something. It was a geography class and we had been told to draw some maps. And I vividly remember carefully drawing some dark black outlines and then filling in the resulting areas with smooth colors, you know, red, blue, green, pink, whatever. It was hugely satisfying and clearly suited something in my character, perhaps a sense of order or something like that. And here I am these days doing exactly the same thing at this workbench, hour after hour and day after day. I carefully create black outlines, then fill them in with areas of beautiful smooth color. Japanese printmaking clearly pushes exactly the same buttons in my mental makeup that those maps did all those years ago. I don't know why my brain likes this so much, but clearly this is the work for me. After well over 30 years of making these things, one by one by one, in the thousands and tens of thousands, it never gets stale. Pretty much every culture on this planet arrived at some kind of printmaking process. It's so rudimentary and simple, it just kind of pops up naturally. But the Japanese approach to it has a very interesting and important fundamental difference to printmaking almost everywhere else in the world. I'm not talking about the technical differences, the washi or the bar and the pigments, whatever. I'm talking about the philosophy that underlies it. In nearly all other cultures on this planet, woodblock prints were historically used as a method of delivering a message. The actual technical and practical points of the printing process were almost irrelevant. Prints delivered messages, frequently political, sometimes satirical, what have you. Printmakers in most cultures were social commentators or even revolutionaries. They wanted to change something. But in Japan, that concept is completely alien to the world of printmaking. Japanese prints are first and foremost decorative objects. They are expressions of beauty. You will not find one print in a hundred, I'm speaking of the traditional work here, that has any message to communicate other than the one visible on the face of the print. Look at this beautiful thing. Now this suits me just fine. I have no interest at all in politics or in haranguing people about how they should do things differently. I just love making beautiful objects. And here in Japanese printmaking, I have the perfect medium for this. Well, when it comes to developing ability at something, a craft like this, or perhaps skill at a sport, anything really, we commonly hear people talk about such things as it takes a 10,000 hours, as though it were simply a matter of spending enough time and making enough repetitions. But that's not true. My friend the metalsmith Ford Hallam and I were talking about this a while back, and he put his finger on the important point. It's no good spending 10,000 hours on practice if you are going to simply spend the same hour 10,000 times. You have to be constantly probing and investigating everything you do. Why did it turn out this way? And what was wrong? What do I have to do to make it better next time? Each and every one of those 10,000 hours, or whatever the magic number might be, has to be spent in such analysis. Mindless repetition, no matter how long, will get you nowhere.
Being here in Japan has of course been very important for me in that in the early days I was able to get chances, even though they were few and far between, of communicating with craftsmen and seeing what they were doing. In the old pre-internet days there was simply no information available at all on these techniques and coming over here to Japan was thus very important for me. Honestly speaking though, I'm a bit handicapped in this whole question of pushing my abilities forward because there are no men left who can work at the level that I would like to reach. Nobody now alive can carve the way that they did back in the Meiji era. So learning those techniques becomes an exercise in reverse engineering, looking at the old prints and blocks and trying to figure out how did they do this? Yes, the success of the Ukiyo Hero series has been a very interesting experience for me. You know. I was quite successful as a printmaker before it came along, but in a very niche way, with a small number of fans who eagerly waited for each print I issued. And now we've got people in over 40 countries waiting for each print. Part of this is of course due to the huge popularity of the original games on which our images are based, but I think a very big factor is the way that we combine the old and the new, and we do this in two ways. One is of course with the imagery itself, modern themes dressed in an old and ukiyo style, but the other is the physical technology. I'm working with almost exactly the same tools and materials that were used over 200 years ago, and yet by placing this all in a completely modern framework, the internet, social media, using YouTube and a webcam to bring people right up to my bench, we make it reachable and understandable to people. It's an absolutely wonderful synthesis. Well, using the traditional techniques, the same one used to create the old Ukiyo-e prints, it's such a perfect match, obviously. Remember, the reason those old prints were hugely popular in their day was because they were based on a pop culture. It was actors, courtesans, characters the townspeople identified with. And we're doing exactly the same thing. People collecting our prints clearly identify with the characters depicted. I don't know, Nintendo and other companies may have created those characters originally, but they have now become part of global culture in which everybody can share. Well, it's common these days when tossing advice out to say things like uh, follow your dream with the implicit assumption that the things will work out if you do so. 
I'm not quite so ready to give that advice. And if you've got some other way to make a living, then sure, printmaking can be very fun and very satisfying. But if you want to make a career out of it, a living out of it, then you had better take a good inventory of your skill set. Anybody can make a print. But to create a large body of work, a consistent body of work over a long period of time, and then get that out into the world where it can be understood and appreciated, well, that takes a whole collection of different skills, and, and making pictures is only one of those. There are days when I spend more time with the bookkeeping, the video editing, the package design, event planning, staff meetings, and etc. Et than I do at my workbench. And I think, actually, perhaps that's not a bad place for us to end this little interview today. It's been fun talking with you, but I really should get back to the waiting work here. You're quite welcome to uh, sit and watch, if you like. <laughs>